in this lecture we will see in detail about the unitary transformation including infinitesimal uh, transformation and finite transfer transformation and their uh, properties also their significance in detail first we will see the definition for unitary operator a linear operator u is said to be the unitary operator if its inverse is equal to its hermitian conjugate that means u dagger must be equal to u inverse that means u u dagger is one unitary matrix or u dagger u is one this is the definition for unitary operator now we will see the significance of unitary operator uh, the unitary operator preserves the norms uh, that is uh, preserves the probability density uh, also it pre uh, preserves uh, inner product but both are uh, interrelated and also it helps to find the time evolution if you know the wave function at uh, time t then uh, you can find the wave function at any other time you know i h cross uh, uh, t by t t of uh, get psi is equal to h psi when you, you bring this uh, i h cross here it will become minus i over h cross so in that way you can find the time evolution uh, also we can change the basis of the uh, vector that is we can change it uh, from position uh, representation to momentum representation and vice versa one important uh, property of uh, you know, uh, unitary operator is the product of unitary operator also is a unitary operator let us say u and v are two unitary uh, operators uh, then uv uh, uv dagger is equal to uh, uv when you are uh, taking co uh, conjugates uh, then it will uh, order will get reversed it will become uv will become v dagger uv uh, dagger will become v dagger u dagger so this uh, v v dagger is one you know then we left with u u dagger which is equal to one again so Uh, the product of two unitary operators are unitary not only two unitary operator if we have uh, n number of unitary operator uh, product of n number of unitary operator will become unitary that is the result of this unitary operator now we will see the eigen value of an unitary operator uh, u is a unitary operator when it act on get lambda we will get the eigen value of lambda and get lambda uh, similarly if you take two l of this that is bra vector uh, u will become u dagger so bra uh, lambda u dagger which is equal to uh, bra lambda uh, lambda of, uh, star this is the uh, complex eigen value uh, here eigen value is lambda star so if you uh, multiply this uh, that is bra u dagger and uh, u get uh, lambda uh, uh, that is bra lambda u dagger multiplied with uh, u uh, get lambda which is equal to when u act on uh, lambda you will get eigen value of lambda when u dagger act on the bra vector lambda you will get lambda uh, star so uh, you can take uh, this is one you can take uh, inner product lambda with lambda here this is also uh, lambda uh, star lambda so this is equal to modulus of lambda square uh, this lambda with uh, inner product of lambda with lambda will become one here also it will become one that means modulus of lambda square is equal to one or modulus of lambda is one unlike hermitian operators the eigen value of the unitary op operator is a complex value so you can see from this the eigen value of unitary operator is uh, a complex value uh, unlike the hermitian operator uh, the eigen value of uh, hermitian operator we know it is uh, uh, 
real number. We will see the uh, inner product of a uh, unitary transformation. Let us say psi1 uh, prime is the uh, new vector space uh, which is equal to u uh, get psi1. So you, you, uh, unitary uh, operator act on psi1, you will get uh, psi1 prime. Similarly for psi2. If you take inner product of uh, psi1 with uh, psi2, you will get uh, this will become uh, psi1, I mean psi1 prime with uh, psi2 prime, you will get uh, psi1 uh, u dagger this, uh, because you are taking this bra vector. 2L of this is uh, psi1, uh, bra psi1 u dagger. This is u uh, psi2, get psi2. So uh, the inner product of psi1 prime with psi2 prime is equal to because u dagger u is a unitary operator so psi da, uh, this will become 1 so naturally this will become psi1 inner product of psi1 uh, with psi2 so uh, the unitary transformation uh, preserves the inner product that is unitary transformation preserves the norms so this is the more uh, more important uh, one so you have to keep it in your mind that the unitary transformation preserve the inner product now we will see the unitary transformation of a operator our old operator is a we are going to transform that operator by a prime so now you take a inner product uh, bra pi 1 prime a prime uh, get uh, pi 2 prime which is equal to this pi 1 prime can be written as you know very well just now we have seen is uh, bra pi 1 u dagger because it's a complex number, bra vector so uh, this a prime we are keeping as it is this uh, pi 2 prime uh, we will get pi 2 prime pi uh, making unitary transformation of uh, pi 2, u uh, pi 2. Uh, now, you know very well that u dagger a prime u is equal to a. So, uh, by just by comparing above, above two equations, we know a is equal to u dagger a prime u. Now, you multiply uh, this uh, by u u dagger, u u dagger. So you, you are operating on the left hand side and u dagger right hand side. So now you know u u dagger is 1. Here also u u dagger is 1. That means this right hand side will become a prime. So a prime uh, you can get uh, in the left hand side you have u a u dagger. So u dagger a, uh, a prime u is uh, a Similarly, a prime, uh, you will get back the original thing by multiplying u a u dagger. Uh, this is about uh, unitary transformation of an operator. Now, we will see the properties of uh, in unitary transformation. Uh, let us say if uh, an operator a is Hermitian, it and it transformed to a prime. Uh, that is how we are changing the operator a to a prime uh, then a prime also hermitian since you can take the a, a prime by definition uh, just now we have seen, um, seen that uh, the a prime can be uh, changed from the original operator by taking uh, u a u dagger if you take uh, dagger uh, on uh, both sides that is a prime dagger and u a u dagger uh, of dagger then you will get uh, when you are taking dagger operation the operator get reversed so u dagger come first so u dagger of dagger then a will become a dagger then this u which will come uh, here uh, will be the become uh, u dagger so now u dagger u dagger is equal to u and u dagger we have taken as it is since a is a hermitian we have 
taken A as a Hermsen, then A dagger is equal to A. So now U, A, U dagger by definition is equal to A uh, prime. So uh, if you take uh, A prime dagger, which is exactly equal to A prime. Uh, so if A is Hermitian, then uh, the transformed uh, operator also, that is A prime also Hermitian. And the eigenvalue of uh, A and those uh, of its transformed A prime are the same. Eigenvalue of A and A prime are same. Uh, let us uh, say A, when A act on um, pi n, then you, you will get an eigenvalue of A n, uh, then with uh, multiplied by this get vector pi n. So the uh, eigenvalue of operator A is A n. Uh, so now we are going to see the proof for the same. Now uh, we know that when uh, an act on pi n, it gives the eigenvalue of uh, small an. An is the eigenvalue. Uh, then now we will see what will happen if a prime transformed operator act on uh, psi n prime, what will happen? Uh, we will see. Uh, so uh, this is the new wave function. This is the uh, new operator. The, uh, then uh, what will happen if new operator act on new wave function? Uh, just A prime can be written as U A U dagger. We know pi definition. Similarly, this uh, pi n uh, can be uh, uh, sorry, pi n prime can be written as this thing. U uh, uh, which act on pi n gives you the pi n prime. So that also we know. Uh, now uh, you can write this u uh, uh, u a u dagger here are another u. So if you take this u dagger and u u dagger and u which gives you the value 1. This is equal to 1. This is 1. And uh, remaining term left is u a uh, pi n, uh, get pi n. So, uh, this can be when uh, A act on pi n, we know the value. This gives you the eigenvalue A n. Since it's a number you can take out. Uh, so, now this is equal to U uh, which act on uh, get pi n. When U act on uh, get pi n, we will get uh, uh, pi n prime. So, that is uh, transformed wave function. So now when A prime act on uh, pi n, uh, pi n prime, you will get the same wave function A n. So we have proved that uh, the uh, eigenvalue of A and A prime are the same. Now we will see the commutator properties of unitary transformation. So the comm uh, commutators that are equal to a complex number remains unchanged under unitary transformation. Uh, say, let us say, uh, the commutator of operator A and B gives you the value A, where A is the complex number. Then uh, the commutator of A prime P prime uh, is equal to A, A a prime uh, p prime minus p prime a prime. So I am writing a prime in terms of uh, a. The, that is u a u dagger. Similarly here u uh, p u dagger minus u p u dagger uh, u a u dagger. Because I am uh, using the prime operator uh, by in terms of the unitary transformation. Now you know this u dagger u is 1. So uh, this will simply become u a then this p u dagger. Similarly here u dagger u is 1. Then it, this will become u uh, p a u dagger. Uh, so uh, now you take u uh, left hand side and u dagger right hand side. In the fourth term, first term and second term u is left hand side and u dagger is 
right hand side we are not changing the order of the operator so you can take out u left side and u dagger right side then we will get a b minus p a a b minus p a is nothing but the commutation of a with p of course you have u and u dagger outside the uh, so now what is a, a commutation of a with p here we have it is a so this will pick up u uh, a u dagger uh, since it's a complex number you can take uh, back and forth so uh, i can take this in front of the uh, u u dagger uh, then this will become a u u dagger we know very well u u dagger is equal to 1 then it it will become a so commutation of a prime uh, with p prime also a like uh, commutation of a with p is equal to a so uh, the uh, commutator relation will not change under unitary transformation this is very important result now we will see the infinitesimal early small unitary transformation consider an, an operator u which depends on an infinitesimally small real parameter epsilon and uh, which varies only slightly from the unitary operator i uh, that is uh, u uh, u uh, that is unitary operator u, u sub epsilon uh, which is a function of g is equal to the unitary operator plus uh, I, I epsilon times G, where G is called uh, generator. Uh, this U of e, U sub e, uh, epsilon is a unitary transformation only when the parameter epsilon is real and G is Hermitian. So there are two conditions. We are imposing two conditions. That is epsilon must be real and g must be a hermitian uh, so uh, this g also called generator of the infinitesimal uh, transformation uh, so we will see the proof for this that is epsilon is real and g is hermitian just now i have made a statement in order to the transformation to be unitary epsilon must be a real number and g uh, is hermitian operator so uh, to prove this you take u u dagger uh, so it must be equal to identity operator as per uh, definition of unitary transformation so you know u is uh, equal to i unitary operator plus i epsilon g and similarly u dagger this one u dagger is equal to i minus i epsilon uh, g a dagger so here epsilon is real so i uh, that's why i have just to put the minus this minus will come then you multiply uh, the first term with the second uh, bracket term the first one i with uh, this term so i into i will naturally become i i squared is i only uh, then uh, i into this second term so which will become i uh, epsilon uh, g dagger minus of course minus i epsilon g dagger and if you multiply this and this you will get uh, plus i e g of course uh, this identity operator so we are ignoring this uh, then you multiply the second term here first, uh, in the project and second term here in this project so you will get uh, epsilon into epsilon epsilon square since epsilon is a very small quantity epsilon square is uh, still smaller so we can ignore uh, so naturally this will become uh, i uh, plus one by epsilon g minus g dagger uh, this will become zero only uh, g is hermitian uh, then only g minus g dagger will become g g minus g will be zero so this will become identity operator here as i said uh, the epsilon squared term is ignored 
that is a that you have to keep it in your mind now i want to change the representation how uh, we are going to do it see let us take uh, get psi prime which is uh, equal to this unitary operator we have taken uh, i plus uh, uh, i epsilon g as a unitary operator uh, when it act on get psi you will get i into get psi get psi only then plus i e g get psi i e g get psi uh, of course, we are going to see the application of this for transla uh, translational and rotational symmetry. In the case of translational and rotational symmetry, the transformation of an operator A is given by A prime is equal to U. This is U i plus i epsilon g A into U dagger. U dagger is uh, i minus. Uh, I epsilon uh, G dagger. So now you take first term I A I is nothing but A only. Uh, then I this minus you take second term I into A minus I uh, G dagger. Uh, then plus you take second one I epsilon G A i here this is similarly next i epsilon g a i epsilon g a this one into minus i uh, epsilon uh, g dagger so this one so just now we have seen uh, a prime is equal to a plus i a into minus i epsilon g dagger plus i e g sorry i epsilon g a i plus i epsilon g a minus i epsilon g dagger uh, now you just multiply this i a is a only so you can take i e uh, outside um, i uh, e a because this is i e is a number you can take uh, back and forth so i epsilon uh, sorry i epsilon is a number you can take it uh, back and forth so this will become i epsilon a g dagger uh, similarly this one will become plus i epsilon g a because a into i unit uh, unit operator uh, so this will become uh, simply a uh, then next if you multiply i e into minus i e will become uh, plus one uh, epsilon square i sorry i e not i e i epsilon into minus i epsilon will become uh, plus epsilon squared uh, this is uh, g a g dagger g a d. this epsilon square term as i said to since is very small we can ignore uh, just to take first two, three term so this will become a this you bring uh, second one uh, so plus i uh, epsilon g a i epsilon g a minus i epsilon uh, a g dagger but g dagger is equal to g because it's a hermitian uh, so we can uh, write this g a minus a g is equal to the commutation of g with a so we can rewrite the right hand side a prime is approximately equal to a uh, plus i epsilon uh, commutation of g with a uh, if g commit with a uh, the unitary transformation uh, will leave a unchanged if it is a g commit with a the second term will become zero so then a prime will will be equal to a now we will see about the finite unitary transformations uh, we can construct a finite uh, unitary transformation from u e which is a function of g which is equal to i plus i 
epsilon z by performing a succession of infinitesimal trans transformation in step of uh, epsilon. That is, first you transform it uh, by epsilon, then now you do it again repeatedly, uh, then it will be a finite one. If, if from infinitesimal, small number of infinitesimal, you increase number of step. You first uh, make a uh, infinitesimal, then you, you repeat it again and again. And the application of series, uh, a series of successive unitary transformation is equivalent to application of a single unitary transformation. That is very important. Denoting epsilon is equal to alpha over n, where n is an integer and uh, alpha is a uh, finite uh, parameter. Uh, we can apply the same unitary transformation n times. n is a number of times that you are applying the uh, infinitesimal uh, transformation. So, in the limit n is tends to infinite, we obtain uh, that is uh, u alpha g is equal to when limit n tends to infinite uh, and the product uh, of uh, k1 is equal to 1 to n is into uh, 1 plus i alpha uh, over n g can be written as uh, limit n tends to 0 uh, sorry n tends to uh, infinite uh, plus infinite uh, this can be written as 1 plus i alpha uh, g whole power n, uh, where n is the uh, uh, n is the number of uh, step integer. So uh, with, uh, this can be written as e power i alpha g. So we have found that for uh, finite unitary transformation and the unitary matrix u alpha which is a function of g is equal to e power uh, plus i alpha uh, g where g is now the generator of finite transformation and alpha is its parameter like what we have seen in the infinitesimal uh, uh, transformation where epsilon is the parameter and g is the generator. Uh, similarly, here alpha is the parameter and g is the generator. Uh, u is unitary only when parameter alpha is real and g is Hermitian, like the infinitesimal uh, transformation where epsilon is real and g is uh, Hermitian. We have uh, seen that. Uh, so, uh, e power um, uh, i alpha g dagger is equal to e power minus i alpha g, which can be written as e power uh, plus alpha g inverse. So, uh, here u dagger is equal to u inverse, which is the characteristic of uh, unitary transformation. As, uh, if g commit with a, the unitary transformation will leave A unchanged. Uh, that is, you take uh, A prime, which is equal to U A, A uh, U dagger. That is, epsilon I alpha G, uh, sorry, E power I alpha G A into E power minus I alpha G. Uh, since uh, this uh, uh, a and G commute, you can interchange the operator. You bring the operator A uh, left. So this will become A into E power I alpha G into E power minus I alpha G. Uh, this will become 1. So this uh, product of uh, second and third term will become 1. So naturally, this will be equal to A. That is A prime is equal to A. So, as I said, uh, if G uh, commit with A, the unitary transformation will leave A unchanged. Uh, that is one of the important points. Thank you very much for watching my video and supporting me uh, continuously. If you have any question, uh, kindly send it to me the following mail ID, wasumku at gmail.com. Thank you very much.